Hey guys, welcome to Bubble Man's World. It is, what is it, a Sunday today? Sunday the 14th and it's my son's birthday tomorrow. So I'm actually just taking the boat out of the water and I figured I would take us for maybe a little how sound rip. I know a lot of you guys enjoyed it when I tripped out on the boat with uh, Flav 421 with all the epic glass. Now today I don't have epic glass. I just have my little uh, Hitman as well as I have a pure hash joint, just in case I feel the urge to smoke one with you guys out here. But, uh, yeah, we'll go for a little boat cruise. You like that, Oars? Hey? You stoked? You on the boat? You wanna hit that hash joint or what? He's like, yeah, pure hash joint, buddy. All right, well, let's give her some gusto here. We could get a sunrise. Comes our sunrise. Yeah, buddy. Woohoohoo! Sunrise. What do you think of that sunrise, horse? Who out there loves their dog? I mean, how fucking awesome is it to have a little dog? A big dog or a medium-sized dog that just hangs out with you and just loves you. How great is that? Love your dogs, everyone. Treat them well. They deserve it. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm uh, just sitting out here on the boat, and my God, is it beautiful? There's not a single soul on the house sound right now. A little bit of waves coming in on the side here. You can see how the boat's moving fairly substantially as these waves come in. Nice rocking feeling. I got my little dog Oreo with me out here today and uh, I got the Hitman. And I guess I just wanted to have a short little conversation with you guys today about a few different projects I've been working on. They're a little bit... I'm terrible in regards to things that I do and then never mentioning them. Um, I know I mentioned these guys quite a while ago, Frank151. Um, did the cover as well as a spread and the back cover on this book. It's a really great little book. It's their 420 edition and uh, oh, look at that, a little bit of hash stuck right in the inside. That's awesome. So yeah, it's a good little book. It's got a lot of different, you know, pretty much most people that you associate heavy duty with uh, cannabis uh, will be in here. We've got uh, Cheech and Chong obviously and uh, Be Real from uh, Cypress Hill and I think Snoop Dogg's in here. and. We got Daz is in here, we got some Jamaican dudes, some reggae artists, we got myself and Slinger, a um, whole, bu whole bunch of people. Uh, Dr. Dean is in there, G Pen has a page. Basically, a bunch of people I know, a bunch of people I don't know. There's Slinger's page. Slinger's got a great little write up in here. Definitely worth checking. Checking Sling's little article out. He, he does a little interview, JP Bomb does an interview. Really great grower. Oh, and full flavor extract. Water hash, little water hash article. So all in all, it's definitely a book worth checking out. You can check it out at frank151.com, I believe. And uh, it's their 420 edition. So check that out. I did, like I say, I did go over it. I mentioned it one time, like months ago. I just felt like I wanted to give those guys another shout out because they're a great little publication. I didn't know too much about them, but it seems like their the hip hop uh, cannabis crossover has been good enough for them that they've been focusing uh, a little bit more on the cannabis uh, side of things. Um, secondly, I recently did um, a spread and a cover for Cannabis Now magazine. If you guys are familiar with Cannabis Now magazine, uh, you can check it out at cannabisnowmagazine.com. And you can also check out Cannabis Now on Facebook. They've got about, ooh, I don't know, 2.5 or 2.7 million uh, likes, which is a pretty substantial traction for Facebook. They're definitely doing well. And then I also have a, a fairly substantial 
uh, right up in here as well. I got the B on the Medi Kush, which Johnny B really loved. And then a couple of more just nice bud shots. That uh, nice big centerfold. And last but certainly not least, that same picture you saw on the cover of the book. It's a popular one. Everyone wants that shot. And that shot was Remo the Urban Grower. So check out Urban Remo on Facebook and on YouTube because if you want if you enjoy photos like that, you'll definitely enjoy the content that Remo the Urban Grower provides. So I suspect now it's time for us to do a little puffin. Got my hitman. Got my fresh frozen Astro Boy. My skillet tool. And uh, my torch. So I should be able to get the job done here. I always find the skillet tool is a little bit big for this particular piece, but uh, ah, we should be okay. We should be able to get her done. Quite something, even even heating up the nail is a little bit of a challenge. I definitely love my D nail for this very reason. I find the nail is uh, a little bit, a little bit. You never know, especially outside, if it's actually working. There we go. I got a better view on it now getting it hot, hot, hot. Yeah, I wanted to take the D-Nail out today. I've been uh, doing a little bit of work with uh, D-Nail with Brian and Nick and Stevie. Um, not sure how much I'm allowed to say, but we're kind of working on a little project together. Kind of trying to, well, those guys are pioneers. There's no doubt about it. And I think that they recognized um, some of my value in the fact that I, I really use these things a lot, the, their products. I take them all over the world. I use them in different scenarios and I really sort of put the product to the test in a way that a group of guys like that who are constantly pioneering, you just know they're going to have an appreciation for someone like that and uh, indeed they do. Alright, well let's see if we can get a little hit on this thing. Well, there's no doubt about it, that worked. I definitely got a rip. I uh, got my new Method 7 shades on. There's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. These new Coop, the Coops, really like the style, kind of that Ray-Ban old school style, Ferris Bueller or whatever you would have. Um, I've been using my Sun Resistance, uh, these ones. I guess this is the, the regular um, uh, pair. And I've been absolutely loving these. And then I met James from Method 7. At Pacific Garden Northwest, uh, Pacific Northwest Gardening Supplies Vendor Day, and what a great guy! Really knowledgeable, super information. If you if you guys are looking locally in BC for Method Sevens, you can get them from iGreenPlanet.com or Pacific Garden, uh, Pacific Northwest Garden Supplies. And if you're looking for them anywhere else, you can check out Method7.com. I'm telling you, these coops are really great. They had, they had sent me a pair of the new Coop HPS with the mirrored glass lenses, and I went and shot at Tilray a couple of days ago, and I'm not sure if he was one of the owners or if he was one of the head growers, but I let him put on the coops, and he wouldn't take them off. He basically told me that he needed to buy them. He's, he's getting more for all of his gardeners at Tilray, and uh, so I was real happy to set that up and, and, and link those guys up together, because obviously Tilray's got, uh, you know, a couple thousand lights burning and a lot of people in those rooms uh, their eyes are being affected by by that strong powerful light so always a good thing to have your method sevens these aren't particularly a pair you'd wear in the grow room they're a pair for the sun but uh, yeah I sure love them I'll give you a serious testament of how much I like these I'm quite a shade snob I've been using Maui Gyms for the last 10 years and I've gone through many, 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 many pairs and they're 350 bucks. They're not cheap. Anyway, I've got a brand new pair of Maui Gyms at home right now. They're in the case and I've been wearing my Method 7. So I got to tell James that and I think he was definitely like, wow, that's, that's a true story. 
Well, I'm gonna take another rip here and then I think we're gonna boot around, just do a little circle of the house sound and see if I can't maybe locate uh, some dolphins. And the whales uh, yesterday I heard were up in the sound, up in Squamish, so maybe we could head over to the backside of Anvil or something. And I wanna show you guys the whales, I wanna show you guys the dolphins, because it's definitely a level of excitement that we have not yet achieved here on Bubble Man's World. When, uh, when you get out on the boat and you see the whales or the dolphins, I just, I really get giddy. I turn into like a little kid. I'm very uh, big animal lover. Not sure if you guys know that about Bubble Man, but uh, it's part of the reason I'm a vegetarian. I'm not really big on killing and eating animals. I just love them. I love animals. I think they're great. And uh, I can't imagine just, you know, having the love that you would have for your dog but then, you know, just eating a cow. Cows are pretty cool too. Anyway, that's the end of my hippie rant. Time for another bowl. Gotta love the hip bad. That's some glass that I would carry at Fresh Headies. I have to say, Hitman has nice glass. Maybe that's something I should do. Get in touch with Hitman and see if we can't get some of this glass on fullmeltglass.com. What's wrong, Oris? What's wrong, buddy? Hey? What's wrong? He gets a little boat shy sometimes. <coughs> Maybe he wants to go for a ride. Catch up with you guys in a bit. All right, so we're on the back side of Boyer Island. You can see the lions in the background, those two big mountain peaks. And uh, this is the only part of this particular island that is inhabited, that is inhabited, sorry, inhabited. Couple dabs, too many there, bubble man. Uh, so yeah, West Vancouver, right across the way. On the other side of that uh, mountain is Vancouver. And then you have Horseshoe Bay up here where I catch the ferry, when I go see Matt the Great Gardener, or when I go to uh, Tilray, any of those sort of adventures. West Vancouver across the way, a beautiful cloudless sky, and uh, all in all, a good zone. going with the flow thinking you guys might appreciate um, just floating by this island so I think this might be a good time to load yourself up a fat dab twist up a fatty gear up because we're gonna do a couple of minutes of uh, just enjoying this island look for seals eagles um, dolphins maybe The back side of this island is often where the mama seals will leave their seal pups while they go hunt for the day. So you see baby seals quite, quite often just laying on these rocks. Um, they do blend in quite well, but if I see one, I'll, uh, I'll stop the boat and zoom the camera in the best that I can. Pretty cute little, little guys. It almost looks like one, but it's a rock. Wow. <laughs> About 400 feet deep here on the side of this island. What do we got flying by? Seagull? Yeah, a little seagull. 
really beautiful island to kayak around. I'm surprised there's no pups in the sun. It's the right part of day for it. There's a baby pup. There's a little baby pup. A couple actually, four or five all in one little zone. I'll try to get closer without aggravating them. And see if I can get in here and show you guys. The one on the left is the one I saw first, the far left. You can see they're just kind of littering the rocks there. Sorry it's so shaky. I hate that sort of shoddy camera work. Well, there's a bunch of seals here actually, I didn't even notice, like 10 or 20. Not necessarily babies, some of them are. Telephoto. Well, I guess I could take some pictures for you guys and add them into this video. Why don't I do that? Alright, I got a little closer for you guys and I snagged some pictures for you guys. I think my dog's just now realizing that they're there on the side of the rocks. Quite a few over in this corner too. I'm gonna back up. I don't like being too close to the islands and I don't want to encroach on them too much. We haven't bugged them out, they haven't moved, so have a good day bacon seals. That's one of the really beautiful and cool things about living in British Columbia is things like that. Being able to uh, uh, float by on your boat, and see 20 seals or 10 seals or five seals, just chilling on the side of the rocks like that. Let's see if we can't catch some eagles now. Looking up in the trees, bald eagles mate on the back side of this island, so there's often, always, you know, generally one or two of them. Uh, couples, I mean, so two to four bald eagles. We should catch at least one of them. It is a pretty vast forest up there. It's just a matter of looking for the white head. There goes our neighbor. Driving that boat. We're heading into the house sound now, that island in the background that um, appears to have no top is called Anvil, Anvil Island. 
There's not much going on over there other than I believe a Christian camp. I guess while we're floating around this island, we could learn a little something about our endocannabinoid systems. I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with your endocannabinoid system, but uh, it is a system that helps uh, regulate most of the biological functions that occur in your body. Uh, how well you remember and how well you forget, how well you sleep and how well you wake up, when you get hungry and when you're full, how well you go to the bathroom. All these certain, uh, all these different biological functions are uh, tuned and put into homeostasis via um, uh, your endocannabinoid system and the proper feeding of that endocannabinoid system, which of course doctors tell us to uh, consume amino acids, omega-3s and omega-6s. There's actually eight uh, essential amino acids that humans require to survive and a couple of more, three more I believe, uh, for children. So they need 11 and we need eight. Anyway, those uh, amino acids are building blocks and they help produce uh, endocannabinoids uh, inside your body. That's what endo means, endogenously. Uh, those cannabinoids are produced via the building blocks of amino acids. But you can also get more help and saturate your endocannabinoid system uh, by consuming uh, phytocannabinoids, which are exclusive to cannabis. Now, phytocannabinoids. Um, CBD, CBN, CBC, CBG, THC, all these different, uh, you know them all, I'm sure. Um, these, these function in our bodies to help regulate and, uh, our endocannabinoid systems and put us into a state where um, we don't get as sick. We are less susceptible to disease. We are able to prevent things like heart disease, stroke, diabetes. Um, these are all very important factors in life, and uh, if you look them up, they're very high uh, disease rates, uh, the highest disease rates in the world, heart disease and stroke, diabetes, and the cost of them on the healthcare is astronomical. So just simply allowing us to consume phytocannabinoids, and when I say consume, I, uh, please don't think that I mean just smoke. Um, the smoking, uh, please, when I say consume, please don't think I mean just smoke. Because truly, what I'm what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the creams, uh, the transdermal patches, the sublingual drops, um, edibles, and then of course uh, vaporization as well. Smoking has its place. Don't get me wrong. It can stimulate appetite quickly. It can relieve ocular pressure quickly. Uh, it can produce wonderful euphoric feelings, which I believe are uh, medicinal and preventative in their own way. And uh, yeah, all around to uh, saturate that endocannabinoid system when you can. And I'm going to leave you with that because I feel like I'm kind of going on and on now. But uh, thanks for coming out on the boat with me. It was real fun. Sorry I didn't uh, really have much more to talk about in regards to uh, Ja Herbs. And I didn't really show you many hashes or herbs. But uh, we saw the beautiful house sound on really like a 9 out of 10 day. I think that's uh, that's pretty good. I'm heading up to Whistler for the next couple of days, so you may catch a Bubble Man's world from up there. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.